Um, well, I hope nobody's watching this video at this particular moment because it's Friday. It's very nice outside. You should be outside if you can. Uh, but I will do the video. Um, let's see how I do it. Let me get my pen to work. Okay, so uh, it's really this simple. So, I mean, it's, I don't even know what else to tell you. So, evaluate. So think about what that means. You have $74 and somebody's gonna take away $64 in debt that you have. But you don't have $64 in debt. You're good, you're at $74. But think of it as they're taking a future debt away from you. So in essence, it means that you have your $74 and that person is covering you for a future expense of $64 that you're gonna have. So that literally means that you're, they're giving you $64, right? So that gives you 138. Now, if you change that to addition, doesn't that, isn't that what we're talking about? So we're increasing in wealth, increasing in wealth, right? So uh, when somebody comes over here and you're a positive and uh, they, they wanna take away debt from you uh, uh, and you don't have any debt, that, that means they're literally giving you money uh, instead. Okay, so that you can use for a future date. So, 138. Uh, circle all situations that result in the value of zero. Going up 24 floors. So if you are at zero, so imagine the street level, which I shouldn't draw that way, I should draw like here. And you're at zero, right, on the ground floor, and you go up 24 floors, and then you go down 27. Are you back on the ground floor? No, you're probably somewhere, not probably, but you're down at the negative third floor or three floors underground, so definitely not that one. Temperature is at 8 uh, Celsius and then increases by 9 Celsius. No, that doesn't make any sense either. You're at 8 Celsius. And increases by 9, that takes you to 17 Celsius. So that's definitely not. Getting 80% on the test and then doing test corrections to get half of the points back. So you have an 80 out of 100 and you make corrections. Um, you got 20% that you lost, right? because you earned 80%, uh, so you got 20% that's at stake here. So you do corrections, and your teacher gives you half the points that you orig originally had lost. So in essence, they're giving you 10% back. So that boosts, boosts your grade up to 90%. That also doesn't get to zero. So hopefully the last one, I spent 4,500 renovating the bathroom, and then I won 4,500 winning a lot of ticket. Well, which means that I'm at zero, right? I, I I did a lot of ticket cover my expenses. Eh, theoretically, it works out. Um, in reality, you might have to pay taxes on the 4,500, so you really didn't win 4,500. You probably won like, I don't know how much taxes they take away from that, maybe 20%, 30%, so. But let's just not talk about taxes and just consider a situation that this would be a situation where you end up at zero. So you spent 4,500, then somebody gave you 4,500, you're back at zero, okay? Put the following order from least to greatest. So it's a number line. So if it helps, draw a number line. Um, 12 positive, I'm just gonna make this. So that's 10, that's 20, that's 30. So 12 would be around here. And likewise, let me line up. So the zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, we're decreasing and decreasing in value. So negative, we did 12, so that's gone. Negative five is here. Um, negative 40 is all the way here. Negative 38 is a little bit before negative 40. And no, sorry, negative 38. Negative 39 is a, a little bit closer to negative 40, so. Now notice that these numbers are now in order. So if you wanna use a number line to help you, it's easier. If you don't need it, that's great. Oops, oh, that's correct. And in a num on a number line, the number to the right is always the greater one. So if you're comparing negative 40 and negative 39, who has a greater value? Negative 39. Would you rather be owing somebody $40 or $39? Well, it's not much of a difference, but I still like to be $39, so $39 is a little bit more value than, uh, sorry, negative 39 is a little bit more value than negative 40, and so forth, the number on the right. So anytime you're comparing two numbers, put them on a number line. The number on the right, right, further to the right, is always going to have to create a value, okay? 
Negative 15 is greater than which of the sums? Well, so the first one is a negative plus a positive. Uh, so again, I am, I, if, I, if you, I guess I keep saying this, so I'm going to negative 34 and I'm adding positive, which means I'm increasing value. So I'm going to go back a little bit to the right. So from negative 34, I'm going to remove 12. Uh, so that ends, puts me at negative 22. Negative 8 minus negative 7, so if you want to switch that to an addition, if it's easier for you to see it, it's two negatives added together. We're going further to the left on the number line, so that's negative 15. Uh, negative 24 and negative 31 is likewise. I change it to addition. It becomes negative 24 plus negative 31, and again, we're adding debt on top of debt, so that takes me further left and negative 55. And the last one is already in an addition format. It's negative 7 plus negative 9, negative 16. So negative 15. So again, I'm going to use a number line. And if I put this, so if that's 0 and, I'm, and that's negative 15, let me put negative 22. Negative 22 would be over here. Negative 55 would be all the way somewhere over here. Negative 16 is just after negative 15. And... We have one more, which is exactly on top of negative 15. So we have negative 15 on top. So negative 15 is greater than which of these sums? Negative 15 actually is greater than all of them, right? Negative 15 is greater than negative 16. Negative 15 is greater than negative 22. It's greater than this. It's greater than negative 55. And it's greater than negative 15. But as, as far as negative 15, it's equal to negative 15, right? So, um, yeah, that's it. So this is what a review video looks like. What integers, when divided, give you a positive quotient? Well, you give me a positive quotient, so let me see, divide it. So what can I divide? What two integers can I divide? I can divide a positive integer, divided by another positive integer. That's going to give me a positive quotient. And the other scenario where this can happen is when I divide a negative integer with a negative, another negative integer, and that's going to be a positive uh, quotient. Okay, so I don't, I don't, I don't I, you didn't need to give me a specific, uh, what do you call, integer, but just, you know, that would have been fine. Negative 29 minus negative 17, um, I'm not asking you to explain, but again, I, just because you have that culminating task to do, so maybe this can help. But here you are, at negative 29, okay? And uh, there's two ways of thinking about this. To this, you're going, somebody's coming over, you have, you're in debt at negative 29, and I come over and I'm going to remove 17 of that debt from you. That's right. I'm taking 17 of your debt, 17 of your debt away from you. So if you're negative 29, I'm taking 17 of your debt from you. What am I? Am I increasing your wealth? Am I making you poorer? Obviously, I'm making you a little bit less poor. So I'm increasing your wealth. So that's how much I'm going to take. And this is how much I'm going to take. I'm going to take negative 17 away from you. Right? So the absolute value here, that distance, right? This distance of 17, sorry, I should put this, is I'm going to remove from the absolute value of negative 29. So if I take that away, uh, how much do you have left over? You have left over. You're still in the negative, but you're still in a little bit better situation. So negative 29 minus negative 17 is equal to negative 12. If you want to change that to an addition problem, that's okay. Um, we can do that too. So again, I don't do this, with you, uh, do this with you guys, but you can. Here's my first integer. My, uh, my first number is negative 29. We don't touch that. The subtraction becomes addition. And we're going to use the opposite of the second addend, which makes it a 17. So again, isn't that the same thing? I'm at negative 29, and to that I'm giving you 17, or we're adding 17, a positive number, so that makes us go to the right of the number line. It's still taking us to negative 12. Okay, yeah, I, know. I took one, sorry, made that question a little bit longer than it should have. Which expression has the least value? So which of these sums is furthest to the left on the number line? So negative 2 and negative 23 is negative 25. 21 minus 56, let's change that to an addition. It becomes this. And if we actually do that, it becomes negative 25. So, as a, so far, we have a tie. Negative 17 plus negative 33 is negative 50. So that's even further left on the number line. So that's, that's our winner right now. And 33 plus 62. So think about that. Um, here's 0. You're at 33. We're adding negative, right? We're giving you debt. So 
basically you have thirty-three dollars and you spent sixty-two. You spent more than you had, so there. So here's what you had, and then you all your money is gone, and now you're in the debt territory. So how far to the left of the uh, of the number line did you go? Well, what's the difference between sixty-two and thirty-three? Twelve and three is nine. Five and three is two. So you're all the way to negative twenty. So out of the four numbers, negative 25, negative 50, negative 21, 9, which one is the furthest one to the left? It's the furthest left to the left of the number line or to the, to the left of zero. And that would be, so that has the least value. Sam lost 29, 29, $25. Okay, so let me write that down. Then he lost $9 on a soccer bet and lost another 30 to a friend. We present the situation as an arithmetic sum and evaluate. Well, he had 20, he's, he's down 25 plus what happened. So again, as a sum, right? Um, he lost another nine and then he lost another 30. So as an arithmetic sum, this is what it would look like, right? I'm using addition to represent this particular situation. And then what is evaluate, find the answer. So we're going to refer to this guy. Sam is losing uh, more and more money. Negative 25 and negative 9 is negative 34. Now he loses, or she loses uh, $30 more. And she's all the way at negative 64. Find the decimal equivalent of 7 over 15. So all you have to do is divide, right? To change a fraction to a decimal, we divide. 15 does not go into 7, so let's add a decimal here. 15 goes into 74 uh, times, which is 60. <laughs> Subtract, we have 10, low, 10 uh, left over. We're going to continue just a little bit more, see what happens. 15 goes into 106 times, which is 90. 6 times 5 is 30. Carry 3, which is 80, sorry. So it should be 7 times. No, maybe. Seven, no, six times. Six times five is 30, and then 90, okay, sorry. Subtract, you have 10 left over, bring a zero down. You'll notice that it's gonna be a repeating decimal, so it's got another six, 90. And if you bring another zero down, it keeps on going. So this, so 7 15 as a decimal, is going to be 0 0.4, and the repeating part is 6, so we put a little bar notation, and that's what it looked like. So the bar notation goes on top of the 6, by the way. Okay, so 0 0.46 is our answer. Um, divide, well, it's going to be a negative quotient, right? So what is, what is that? 1, 13, 17, negative 17. Okay. Value of the expression, let me just write it over a little bit. Parentheses 2, negative 8 plus 3. All right. So negative 2, negative 9 to the second power is negative 9 times negative 9, which is a negative times a negative, so that gives me a positive. Minus, let's do the parentheses first. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. Okay. So uh, I'll just do this. So 81 minus, and we're going to multiply these two. It's a positive times a negative, so this, we're going to um, put it in parentheses negative 10. So now we have a subtraction problem, which you can change to addition, and you get 91. Okay, eventually, we're going to start writing this. We can just go to, straight to, to this, from this step on, but it's okay. Uh, 12, which expression has the greatest value? I don't know. I'm actually going to have to do it. So... Negative times a positive is a negative, negative 18. Negative divided by positive is again negative, negative 18. 4 times negative 5 is a negative, negative 20. And negative 48 divided by 12 is negative 4. Which of these four numbers are is furthest to the right on the number line? And that would have, and that would be the one with the greatest value. And there is your winner. Okay. Um, Which expression can you use to find the average, the, the change in elevation if you're going from 12 underwater to the top of a building that's 245 feet above sea level? So let me see if I can draw this. So this is zero, right? And you're negative 12, that's where you are right now. And you and the top of the building, 
right, move whatever buildings all the way to the top. Now, when you're calculating distance, right, you have to be careful because distance is uh, is never negative, right? If there's no negative five feet or negative two meters, it's, distance is not, not negative. So, one of these expressions. So let's just let's forget about the multiple choices for a second and focus on how we can find the answer here. If you're on the negative, if you're negative twelve below zero and you have to climb all the way to positive two forty five above sea level, what, how much, what's the different distance that you would cover? So let's do this in two parts, maybe. One part is this. Negative 12 to 0, that'd be 2 units, 12 units, 12 meters, 12 feet, whatever. Uh, what is this? 12 feet, so 12 feet. And then from 0 to 245, you would make, need to take another 245, uh, cover 245 feet. So the distance covered, if you're at negative 12, all the way to the top would be the sum of these two. Uh, these two values, right? 245 plus 12, and you would get 257, 257 feet. So that's how much you would have to cover to get to your to your uh, the top. Sorry. Now, which of these will also get give me 257? Well, if I do negative 12 minus 245, it's negative 12 plus negative 245. And that's going to give me negative 57. So that's not it, because distance can't be negative. Second one, absolute value of negative 12. That's correct, right? That's basically what I did. I found the absolute value of negative 12, which is 12. Minus 245. I don't even have to go through this, because I know it's, it's going to give me a negative answer. 12 minus 245 is a negative answer. So again, this is not what I want. Here we have negative 12 minus 245, right? So let's do that. First, negative 12 minus 245 is negative 12 plus, right? I'm going to change that subtraction to addition, plus negative 245. So, negative 12 plus, 200, plus negative 245 is negative 257. If I take the absolute value of negative 257, I get 257. Positive. But this looks like a, this looks not, doesn't look, it is my answer, but just, to confirm, let's do the last one. So I can't subtract that because I have to find the absolute value. So I get negative 12 minus the absolute value of 245 is 245. This be this ends up being that one. So over here, I am sorry, it ends up being the first one. I am going to get 257, but I'm going to get 257 negative. So negative 12 subtraction becomes addition. Positive integer becomes the opposite, which is a negative integer. So if I add these two, I get negative 57. But although the number is similar, it's negative. I need something that is positive. Okay, so that could be a little bit tricky. Careful. <coughs> um, where are we? Oh, I forgot 13. So 13, let me put it over here, negative 5 times 6 divided by negative 10. So order of operation dictates we do these two first. A negative times a positive is a negative. And then we're going to divide by negative. Negative divided by a negative is just a positive, and 30 divided by 10, it's just all this means 3. The bonus word has three parts. The first part is the word, this word right here, okay, your kernel. Um, a skier descends at a rate of six feet per second. So a skier, obviously, so let's go on a mountain and here's your skier, right? Um, Right, the skier is going down. He's going six rates per second. So, as he's going, so because he's he's descending, his rate is six feet per second. We're gonna write negative six feet, right? Because so, what's his? What's the change in elevation at one minute? So, the change in elevation at one minute. So, I don't know how how far up he is, but I know that after one minute, um, how far? How much did his Altitude change. So from here, he's somewhere 
down here, right? So I just need to know what that change was. In this case, the change is going to be negative. Um, uh, so six feet per second. So let's multiply six feet, negative six feet times sixty seconds, and that's going to give you negative three hundred sixty feet. That's going to be the change in his elevation. Negative, ne negative, negative, oh. negative three hundred, hmm. negative three hundred and six, negative three hundred and sixty feet. That's how much the change is. Okay. So from wherever he was, let's say he was at eight hundred feet up the mountain after a full minute his um, his elevation has changed by 360 so he would be at whatever 800 minus 360 but we, we're not concerned about that mr cho owes the bank 120 why do i owe anybody money um he borrows money to buy 12 coffees at dollar 25 each for all the math teachers how much does he owe now gee well Apparently, I'm a negative 20. So, let me keep this like this. So, to that, what am I adding? More debt, or am I adding, or am I getting out of debt? Well, apparently, I'm buying, I'm borrowing money to buy coffees. So, plus, let's find out what the 12 coffees are going to cost me. So, it's $1.25 times 12. Uh, let's multiply. There's two decimal places here, no decimal places. So, my answer should have total two decimal places, right? So two, uh, 250, to zero, 125, so the coffee's gonna cost me hmm, two decimal places. 25 bucks? No way. No. 15 bucks. Sorry. 15 bucks on the coffee. So I already owed 120 and I'm apparently buying coffee for everybody and the coffee cost me $15. So to the 120 that I already owe, I'm gonna add a little bit more debt. And that's gonna take me to negative one hundred and thirty-five dollars. Jeez. Alright, so I think that's the first page. Yes, it is this simple, so should be very happy. Clark's parked on uh, his car on the seventh floor underground. He goes up 19, at lunch he goes down 8 floor to meet his girlfriend. Then he decides to go to a restaurant that is located 6 floor down. On what floor is the restaurant? Alright, so it's, no, you can do two things. You can draw this out, or you can write an expression for it. So, his car is parked 7th floor underground. So, he is currently here. We keep this as an addition, right? Goes up 19 means that from negative 7th floor under, uh, below 0, right? We're adding 19 floor. So, Negative 7 plus 19 is going to take us all the way to 12th floor. So his office is on the 12th floor. At lunch, he goes down 8th floor to, his, to meet his girlfriend. So to go down 8th floor means negative 8. Meet his girlfriend. Then they, just go, they decide to go from there, from whatever floor that is, 6 floors down from wherever that position is. So that would be another negative 6. So what, from what floor is... The restaurant. Well, negative 7 and 19 is 12. Then 12 plus negative 8, my close expression, 12 plus negative 8 is on the 4. That means the girlfriend works on the fourth floor. And then plus the negative 6, they end up being two floors on the ground. So the restaurant is two floors down. And if you want to use pictures, that's fine. I think this might be a little bit too much work. So this is zero, ground floor. One, two, three, four, five, first floor, second floor, negative first, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, so he's here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so he's here currently. Goes up 19. All right, I'm not gonna draw this, but he goes up 19. And then he comes down eight. And then he comes down six, so that's how he gets to negative two. Um, I think working it out as an expression is a little bit easier. Death Valley is located 286 below sea level. Okay, all right, so we did this question sort of. Um, Mount Rushmore is 5,725 feet above ground at zero. 
in Death Valley is somewhere. What is this? 286. So not that far down, but so the bottom of Death Valley is 286 feet. And again, the top of the mount is 5,725. And what do we want? What's the difference in elevation? So again, if you want to do it, you can do it like this, but make sure you use the absolute value. So it's 286, right? Minus 5,725. Sorry, negative 286, because that's where that says minus. You find the difference between those two. And, but make sure you put the absolute value uh, in between absolute value brackets. And if you find the difference, you're actually going to be doing 286, right? Plus negative 5,725. So literally, what we're doing, we're adding this up, we're adding this distance, we're adding that distance, and we're going to take the absolute value. So the absolute value, sorry, let's add them up first. So 5725 plus 286, 11, 11 plus 110 plus 16. So the total, is, although it's negative, right? Now we take the absolute, absolute value and we get that the distance between those two points is 6,000 feet. <coughs> ah. Sorry, T. Um, second word of our bonus word. No T. There's no rhyme or reason for these words. I just write whatever I see. Second word, okay. And then, where am I? 19, Carlos was playing a video game. He had a character. His character had an energy, energy level of 3,000, okay. For the next 15 seconds, he was attacked by a large group of monsters and his energy level dropped to zero. What was the change in energy level each second? Okay, so 3,000 points is what he had. And we're going to divide it by 15. Well, let's change. So 3,000 divided by 15 is... Okay, sorry. So the change is 200, but because it's a decrease, right? So we can, we, we're going to say that it's negative here okay so first of all it's 200 that's a change in points sorry but because uh, this energy is dropping um, to match to, to match the sentence here um, it's, we're, we're gonna say that um, it's 200 200 points per second okay negative 200 points per second was the change uh, that occurred to him. Okay. Hmm. Twenty. Which expression has the least value? Okay, so I'm gonna have to. Oof. Let's do the first one. Negative two. Ugh, there's absolute value minus sixteen divided by negative four. Take the absolute value. So remember, there's a multiplication sign here, even though you don't see it. So it's negative 2 times the absolute value of that expression inside. So I'm going to keep the negative 2 outside for now. And inside, remember, careful, that is not negative 5 to the second power. It's 5 to the second power. So that, change it again. The minus side is going to just hang out there. And we're going to take the, we're going to find what 5 squared is. 5 squared is 25. Okay. And then minus 16 divided by negative 4. I'll do it one step at a time. And again, we have negative 2. And then we're now going to divide these two. So we've got negative 25 minus, and let's divide 16 divided by negative 4, which is going to be negative 4 because it's a positive divided by negative. Um, still can't take the absolute value so again two times and we can do negative 25 minus negative 4 and that is simply negative 25 plus 4 which gives me negative 19. I can finally take the absolute value so that becomes 2 times the absolute value no, sorry negative 2 times the absolute value of negative 19 which is 19 and final answer negative 38 because it's a negative times a positive. This one is negative 38 um, okay, and 
then second expression absolute value of okay negative three so negative three to the third power is negative three times negative three times that and it's negative three because it's parentheses so we're taking negative three right so it's negative three multiplied by negative three three times it's going to give us negative 27 minus two which i'm not going to do yet and on this side, I'm going to do 24 divided by 2 to the second power, which is just 4. Okay, so we need to simplify everything in the expression before we take the absolute value. So now we have negative 27 minus 2, which is the same thing as negative 27 plus negative 2. Okay, and negative 7 plus negative 2 is negative 29. And I'm not taking the absolute value yet. On this side, 24 divided by 4 is 6, and the absolute value of uh, so let me just write it down. Now I'll take the absolute value of both. The absolute value of negative 29 is 29, minus the absolute value of 6, which is a 6, final answer 23. So this is 23. Mm. This one, careful, not it's not negative 4 to the second power, it's just 4 to the second power, so that minus sign is there, 4 to the second power is 16, minus negative, this is negative 4 times negative 4, so that is 16. 16 minus 16, ne sorry, negative 16 minus 16 is now 0, it's negative 16, plus, change subtraction to addition, 16 becomes negative 16, and that becomes negative 32. Because it's negative plus a negative, we go further to the left on the number. So which one has the least value? Which of these three numbers is furthest to the left? And that would be our first problem, negative 38. Um, I make tons of mistakes, guys. Hopefully none here. So find the mean. Find the mean means to find the average. And how do we find the average? To find the average, we have to add all the values. Oops. Negative 19 plus negative 9. So we're going to add all that and divide by the number of values in our data. And our data is made up of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers. So that's to find the average. Okay. Uh, negative 20. So let's see if I can do mental math. Ne negative, 20, no, negative 23 plus 18 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus this 7 is positive 2. Positive 2 plus negative 19 is going to be negative 17. And negative 17 plus this negative 9 is going to be negative 26. So all that becomes negative 26 over 5. Uh, and then we find the average, and you actually don't leave it like that. Um, it's going to be a negative number, first of all. And now we just divide 26 divided by 5. 26 divided by 5 is 5 point... Oh, can I add a decimal? Bring the 0 down. 5.2 because 5 times 2 is 10 and we have nothing left over. So 20, negative 26 divided by 5 is 5.2. Okay. Change fractions to decimals. Oh, fine. God. All right. It's going to be a long one. Hopefully, you don't have to watch the whole thing. Just watch what you need. Um, change the fraction to decimals. 9 over 14, 9 doesn't go into 1, but 9 goes to 14 once, subtract, so 14 minus 9 is 5, we're going to add a decimal, bring the 0 down, bring the decimal up, 9 goes to 50, uh, 5 times, which is 45, subtract, you got 5 left over, bring another 0 down, let's continue just this just for a little bit, and it's another 5, and you can see a pattern, right? So it's going to be... A repeating decimal. 9 over 14 is going to be 1.5555 forever and ever, or just 1.5 bar notation. 1 over 8, hopefully, it's easy. That's not going to 1, so we are allowed to add a decimal, which allows me to bring 0 up. 10, 8 goes into 10 one time. Subtract, that's 10 minus 8 is 2. Bring another 0 down. 8 goes into 22 times, which is 16. Subtract, we get 4. Bring another 0 down, 8 goes into 45 times. So 1 over 8 is 0 0.125. 11 over 15. Right. Favorite. Um, 
15 does not go into 1, does not go into 11. We are allowed to do this now, add a decimal, and add a 0. 15 goes into 11, uh, 110, I have no idea how many times. Uh, let me cheat here. And that looks like 7. 7, goes, seven times 5 is 35, carries 3, it's 105. So subtract, we get 5 left over. I think I see them. 15 going to 53 times, which is 45. Subtract, you got 5 left over. Bring another 0 down just to see how this continues. 15 goes to 50 another 3 times, and we already found that this is a repeating decimal. It's going to be 0 0.73333 and over and over and over forever and ever, or 0 0.7, oops, 3, the bar notation. 12 over 25 as a decimal. You can divide or, no, I'll just divide. Maybe some of you have a little extra practice. So I'll just keep dividing. So it doesn't go into 1, doesn't go, oops, doesn't go into 1, doesn't go into 12. Let's add a decimal. Put a 0 down. That's 4 times, which is 100. Minus, subtract, 120 minus 100 is 20 left over. Bring another 0 down. 25 goes into 108 times. So as a decimal, it's 0 0.48. So that was easy. The average temperature in Mars is negative 63 Celsius. The average temperature in Lima, Peru, is 17 Celsius. What is the difference in uh, temperature? So again, uh, what is the difference in temperature? So we can go 17, which is the final, and this is the start. We can go final is, or the change is, uh, Final minus start, so we can go 17 minus negative 63. That becomes 17 plus 63. The difference in temperature be in between both uh, places is uh, 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, maybe you want to use this. Here's Lima at 17 degrees Celsius. Here is what do you call Mars at negative 63 Celsius. Right, you can find the absolute value here, find the absolute value here, that's 17, 63, and add them all. Evaluate each expression. Can we just do this? Okay. So, let's do the first one. Nah. So, who's going to a third power? 3 is going to a third power, keep that in mind. Minus the absolute value of 12, minus 22, close. Minus negative 3 to the third power. Big difference. So that minus sign just stays there. Let's find out. 3 to the third power is 27. There it is. Minus 12 minus 22. It's the same thing as 12 plus negative 22, which gives us negative 12. Sorry, negative 10. I'm not taking the absolute value yet. Um, negative 12 plus negative 22 is negative 10. Yep. And then minus... What's negative 3 to the third power is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is negative 27. I'm going to rewrite this one more time and take the absolute value of negative 10, which is just 10, and then minus negative 27. Okay. Order of operations, left to right, we're going to do these two right here first. Negative 27 plus, right, I'm going to change this to an addition problem, and the opposite of 10 is negative 10. Negative 27 plus negative 10 is negative 37. I'm Going to bring this guy down here, it's minus negative 27. Again, change it to addition, negative 37 plus 27 is going to give us negative 10. Negative 12 minus 4 times negative 2 to the 4th power plus 4 times negative 11. Okay, so this one's a little bit simpler. Negative 12 minus 4 times negative 2 to the 4th power is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. 2, 4, 8, 16, positive. It's an even number of negatives being and multiplied, so it's positive. So that becomes 17. Plus, you know what? I'm just going to take out. Let me write that. So now, multiplication comes first, right? Before addition or subtraction, so negative 12 stays, the minus stays, but I can multiply these two. So let me focus on these two. It's 4 times 16, which is uh, 64, plus, plus these two. 
right? Let me put a square in that kind of rectangle. 4 times negative 11, which is negative 44. Eventually, we're going to get rid of all those double signs next to each other, which I'm not particularly fond of. But again, let's do these now. Negative 12 minus 64. Do the same thing as negative 12 plus negative 64. And that's just negative 76. Finally, I can do the other half plus negative 44. So negative plus a negative, which is a negative, and that's going to be 120. Three times the absolute value of 12 minus 8 divided by 2 cubed. Well, three times inside the absolute value we have 12 minus 8 divided by 2 to the third power, which is 8. Three times, well, I still can't take the absolute value, but I can do, I have to simplify this. So it's 12 minus 8 divided by 8. We have to do the division first. So we end up having 12 minus 8 divided by 8 is 1. Three times, and what's 12 minus 1? It's 11. I can finally take the absolute value. Three times the absolute value of 11, which is 11. The final answer is 30. Uh, I think we have a couple, that's it, Ooh, more. 25, if statement is true, okay, so a integer raised to an even power will always be positive, well, let's see that. So let me take a positive integer and raise it to an even power, like to the second power, fourth power, sixth power, eighth power, so let's try fourth power. Three, 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 twelve, they're all positive, so there's no way this is going to be negative, so, so far it's true. Let me take a negative number. Negative 2 and raise it to the power of 2. Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive, so that's going to be plus. Let me take negative 2 and get another even power. Let's try 4. So that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. It's an even number of negative numbers being multiplied, so that's going to be positive. But this is true forever and ever. A negative minus a negative is sometimes negative. Let's pick some numbers here. Negative minus... A negative. Well, negative 5 plus 10, that's what becomes to be changed to addition, and this is positive 5. So that answer doesn't, this one, this so far not good. So let me pick another value, negative 5. Let me make it a, not 10, but let me make it a little bit uh, closer to 0. Negative 5 minus, I don't know, let's try negative 1. So it's a negative minus a negative. So does that equal negative? So I change this to addition, I get negative 5, subtraction becomes addition, negative 1 becomes 1, and look at that, I do get a negative answer. So, I guess this is true also because a negative minus a negative can, according to what I did, it, it got me a positive, and I guess there are times when I'm going to get a negative answer, so it is also true. The number line, the number on the left always has a greater value. Okay, so draw a number line, draw a 0. Pick two numbers, two, three, oops, where's one, five, no, it doesn't matter. But pick two numbers, let's pick zero and two. The number on the left is zero. Is zero the greater number? No. So this one says always has a great value, and I just proved it with my first example, that the number on the left does not have the greater value. So this is obviously false right off the bat. And the last word for your bonus is paper. Yeah, three words makes up a little sentence, a little phrase, and that's your bonus. Ah, this one, the part everybody not a big fan of. Okay, so let's substitute carefully. Negative a squared minus b squared. So a is negative 3. So literally, what am I doing? Let me erase the a. Let me erase the b, because in its stead, I'm going to replace it for the values that it's giving me. So a is negative. So if it's negative, I asked you to put it in parentheses. b is negative as well. Let me put it. So that's what the expression looks like with substitution. So now, this exponent of 2 plays a role with the negative 3, with the 3 and the, and the minus sign attached to it. So we're raising negative 3 to a second power. Now, this guy over here does absolutely nothing. So let's just put him there. Now, negative 3 times negative 3, which is negative 3 to the second power, is 3 positive, and that becomes this. 
minus, and again likewise, that minus there, negative 4 to the second power is negative 4 times negative 4, which it gives you, this becomes 16. Let me clean it up. So this is what the expression looks like after I change everything um, to standard form. Then I get negative 3 plus negative 16, and I get negative C times negative 10 minus A times B. So that's what the expression says. So in, this, in place of the variable, so C is 8, I'm going to put it right there, minus 10, and I'm going to change A and B. So A is negative 3, I'll put in parentheses. B is negative 4, put in parentheses, and they're going to be multiplied by each other. And close absolute value. Well, that 8 is going to do absolutely nothing for now. The negative 10 is going to do nothing for now. The minus sign does nothing for now. Let's just multiply these two fellows right here. Negative times a negative is a positive, and 3 times 4 is 12. 8 times, and then let's subtract negative 10 minus 12, which is the same thing as negative 10 plus negative 12. 8 times negative 10 plus negative 12 is negative 22. I can finally take the absolute value of that, which is 22. And my answer is 176. I think 8 times 2 is 16, 16, yeah, 8 times 6, and all that, that means 176. Last question. b cubed minus a times b times c. b is a negative number, so put it in parentheses. I'm going to take that to the third power, and then I'm going to subtract the product of a, which is negative 3, b, which is negative 4, and c, which is 8. Negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 is, first of all, it's going to be a negative number. And then 4 times 4 is 16, but equals 64. Minus the product of these three guys here, um, or girls. Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12, positive. Okay. Negative. Negative 3. Negative 3. Uh, and then, so that's 12. And then 12 times the 8 over there, which is positive as well, is like 96. And I can subtract these two now, so I get negative 64 plus negative 96. Two negatives being added, so I know my answer is negative, and we're going to go so far left on the number line that we're going to reach 160, negative 160. Okay, that's it. And if you did okay, um, hopefully you did okay with the review sheet, um, should be more than okay on the test. Okay, that's that.